What's going on everybody? Redbeard here. Back at it again. We got the Thrones of Decay trailer and reveal. It's big time, big stuff, ready to go. So we got three packs. I just want to give my quick thoughts, kind of go through what everything was. You know, I'm a little behind other big YouTubers, but I, I have to work and, you know, I don't get <laughs> any of this information earlier than you guys do, so... Anyway, so we got to go by Pete because it's three different packs, technically, for each of the races. So we got to go through each one by themselves. So, um, starting with Malachi. So we'll just read through it and, you know, I'll give my thoughts as we go. And then at the end, I'll just kind of go over some other notes on my thoughts. So first... The Malachi Thrones of Decay pack introduces Malachi McKyson, a new legendary lord for the dwarves, usable in both the Realm of Chaos and Immortal Empire's campaigns. Embrace conflict and ingenuity with a new suite of lords, heroes, units, and mechanics to enhance your campaign roster on and off the battlefield. Malachi McKyson brings unique campaign mechanics to the dwarves with a brand new objective in the Realm of Chaos independent from the Ursin storyline. Plus, you, uh, new units and heroes to help them achieve total victory. So the bullet points here are uh, seek a glorious death, reap the rewards, and test your latest innovations as Malachi McKyson. So it looks like with both Elspeth and Malachi, they're doing like some kind of version of the like Claw workshop kind of thing. You know, something different but inspired by so with uh, Malachi here, it seems like, you know, the more you do Slayer type stuff and just throw your <laughs> armies into battle, the more uh, you'll have rewards for this workshop mechanic where you just test your latest innovations as Malachi McKyson, you know, your Goblin Hewers, your Thunder Barges, or, you know, things outside of just unit purview, perhaps. Uh, going on to the next bullet point, bolster your units from the skies with the spirit of Grugni, a mobile workshop and transport vessel. So, and there's multiple things here. Uh, perhaps, you know, this feeds into that same workshop mechanic. Um, as it literally says, a mobile workshop. But I also think there's something here where, you know, maybe it is a black arc type mechanic where... The spirit of Grugni acts independent of Malachi's army, and maybe it is its own army, and but it can literally move to any part of the map because it is a like a flying black arc essentially. I mean, thunder barges are nowhere near the size of a black arc, but you know, uh, I think that's less likely. And what's more likely is that it works like the Vampire Coast's shipbuilding. So essentially, he would be a dwarf with a horde mechanic. Uh, I think that's probably what we're getting. Uh, not too sure, though. We'll have to see. Um, which is really, really cool. If it works, if it's basically just the Vampire Coast shipbuilding mechanic. But for a dwarf, yeah, that'll be great. Uh, Garagrim Iron Fist, the war mourner of Karakadrin and son of Angrim Iron Fist, joins Malachi as a legendary hero, which is interesting. Um, Garagrim Iron Fist is a character I've considered talking about, but is definitely lower priority than, say, Malachi, uh, Grim Berlixen, Joseph Bugman, or Crag the Grim. Um, Ungrim's son is uh, an awesome addition, which Garagrim is. Uh, but with Gotrek in the game, he seems somewhat redundant, perhaps? Uh, maybe he's more of a Doomseeker character, though. So he's better at, like, anti-infantry and uh, better at getting in blobs and doing lots of splash attack damage. Uh, speaking of Gotrek and Felix, they very much feature in the trailer which hopefully means they are being fully reworked to Warhammer 3 Legendary Hero standards. Um, but a, a little more, just getting a little side rant here. 
But uh, dis- I'm, I'm a little disappointed we're not getting Grim Burlickson as the Dwarf Lord uh, for like a more pure engineer-focused DLC. And, and Marius Lightdorf as FLC, but we'll get to that. Uh, but I'm so excited to see Tamar Kane, Elspeth, and Malachi. Uh, I think Malachi was going to be a legendary hero with the toolbox hint around when they did the road map. Uh, it lighted dwarves having enough to get two more DLCs. I think this would have been ideal. That being said, I think with the volatile state of creative assembly shifting, the uh, dwarves from pure engineer focus to having more slayers from the Thrones of Chaos book makes sense. Uh, This is because this is like safeguarding the most important missing units if this is the last dwarf DLC, which I hope not, but it may be. Uh, so instead of something like Crank Gunners, we get the highly requested Doom Seekers now rather than later, because there might not be a later. Um, which, you know, Doom Seekers are awesome, even if that's not exactly what I was looking for. But um, I got, now that I've gone off on the side run, let's just uh, finish up the Malachi Dwarf part of this. Uh, improve your odds with five new units, a generic lord, a generic hero, and a further three regiments of renown, which we know, uh, I th- I'm pretty sure, I- I've seen it everywhere, that the generic lord is the demon slayer, the generic hero is the dragon slayer, and then the uh, five units are the doom seekers, the slayer pirates, the, oh gosh, the thunder barge, the goblin hewer, and uh, Thunder Grudge Rakers, which are shotguns, basically, which we'll get more into. Uh, but Malachi McIson, having been ejected from the Engineer's Guild, uh, after a series of catastrophic malfunctions that cost the lives of many a dwarf, Malachi McIson took the Slayer's Oath and continues to engineer grand machines to this day. Assisted by his entourage of Slayers, one day he hopes to overcome this shame by seeking a glorious death in battle. So at last he may be seen as a true inventor of incredible works and a legend of his time. With a fascination for creating grand machines, Malachi is a ranged support character, damaging from afar with his guns, bombs, artillery, and the most deranged of munitions to whittle down his opponents. Malachi craves nigh unwinnable battles and fights with many foes. As a slayer, he seeks out these worthy combatants to atone for his sins, but as an engineer, he sees it as an opportunity to learn new tricks, advance his equipment, and crush all that stand before him in the name of progress. With Malachi's adventures, Mackaisen aims to prove himself in combat or die trying. Okay, so moving on to Elspeth, this first paragraph here is largely the same as Malachi's, just replace Malachi for the Dwarves with Elspeth von Draken for the Empire. Um, So her bullet points are embrace the strengths of magic and gunpowder with Nuln's Imperial Gunnery School. And the next one being purchase exclusive and powerful units by unlocking the Amethyst Armory. So I think these two work in conjunction with each other where uh, from just the different wordings I've been seeing from official statements online uh, so like the more you basically uh, like get kills in battle uh, the more you'll get some kind of like death resource uh, for basically another workshop mechanic similar to Ike Claw but you know for Ike Claw it's uh, warp stone is the uh, resource for Malachi and Elspeth. It's more just getting kills, though, I guess, is the resource. Uh, but, you know, Elspeth is just, like, death magic, and then... I don't, I don't know what Malachi is. Maybe it's just, like, the, the looted scrap he can use as metal for the workshop. Anyways. So, you use this death magic to get, uh, like, exclusive and powerful units from the Amethyst Armory. Maybe think, like, the the special units you get in Ike Claw's workshop, something like that. And then, yeah, you just increase your gunpowder and magic capabilities. Um, travel instantly between friendly settlements with the Gardens of War. So maybe in, in Immortal Empires and Realms of Chaos, she will actually start in Nome, uh which is not what I predicted. Uh, but because she has this teleport mechanic, which she does teleport uh, 
in lore at least once. Uh, so uh, this actually makes sense to me. Um, it's not what I expected. I was expecting she was going to start like maybe in pig barter um, or kind of kind of right around like Arcan's old starting position um, right above like right above Kislev to the east uh, but yeah so that's a really cool mechanic she can build them throughout the empire so she can like be the protector of the empire I think that's going to be a huge boost against you know <laughs> Vlad Festus Kazrak you know, and all the other problems the Empire has had in Warhammer 3. Um, that's going to be a huge boon. That's awesome. Uh, I wonder if it works outside of the Empire, too. Like, say, for you can go help out Marcus Wolfhart or, uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting his name, Volkmar the Grim. You know, other out, uh, Imperial forces uh, out on the lamb, so to speak. Uh, so, Theodore Bruckner, the Hound of Judgment and a skilled fighter, joins the Empire as a legendary hero. Uh, very much what I expected. I was kind of hoping he would be like an unadvertised champion just for Elspeth, and that we would get another legendary hero like Jubal Falk or Ludwig Schwartzhelm or something like that, but, um, I mean, this is, I still wanted to Theodore Bruckner, so I'm excited to see Theodore Bruckner at the least, you know. The Mountain from Game of Thrones, the Warhammer version, riding a mountain-sized, or not literally mountain-sized, but like <laughs> a giant demogriff mount. Uh, and you improve your odds with five new units, a generic lord, a generic hero, and a further three right now, so over and down. So the generic lord and hero are both engineers. Um, why in the world are we not getting Empire Wizard Lords? I mean, don't get me wrong. Engineer Lords focused specifically on buffing gunpowder will feel right at home. But the Hunter Lord already fills a similar role. I, I don't know. Maybe Wizard Lords will come with a Middenheim DLC. Uh, if any modders are listening, I would kiss the ground you walk on <laughs> if you made Wizard Lords recruitable through a colleges of me uh, magic mechanic. There's a mod that did this or something similar in Warhammer 2 and can maybe be jerry-rigged through Kislev's Ice Court in uh, Warhammer 3. And yeah, give us all eight lores, each with unique mounts, all the fixins, the works. You know, check, check top right for more ideas. Um, but very much expected the hero to be the engineer. That's awesome. Expect them to get the mecha horses and... May, probably this new steam tank volley gun, maybe a regular steam tank. Maybe the hero gets one, the lord gets the other steam tank variant. That would make sense to me. Whichever one, yeah, the volley gun I'm sure is going to be more powerful because, you know, power creep. So give that one to the lord and then the regular steam tank to the hero. Um, along with the mech horse, uh, of course. Uh, and then the five units, uh, the Marienburg landship was a very expected one, especially alongside the Thunder Barge. It just makes sense. Um, it, it's, you know, probably not going to be as good as a Thunder Barge, but just like basically between a Thunder Barge and a Steam Tank. Uh, then we got uh, Nuln Ironsides as their own unit, I guess, instead of a Regiment of Renown. And I, I, I think this is fine. It's just not what I expected. Uh, basically, heavy armed handgunners that fire a little bit faster. So, more DPS, basically. Um, that's awesome. Hawkland long rifles. So, it looks like they're not going to be a carbon copy of uh, crane gunners or, or warp black gazelles. And they're going to be more like the tabletop model, which is going to be fine by me. Uh, maybe less range, but lots of accuracy and hitting power. And, uh, yeah, maybe they have, like, little, the snipe ability where they, um, don't get seen if they're hidden in their shooting. That would make sense. Uh, what else? Oh, we got the Knights of the Black Rose, which is great. I didn't mention Knights in my predictions because I think there should be a Steel and Faith-focused 
Middenheim DLC uh, for the Empire in the future at some point. But uh, definitely cool to see them. And uh, am I missing any of uh, the Empire units? Let me check. Did I get them all? Yeah, yeah, I got them all. Okay, so um, what else? Oh, there's no Celestial Huracanum in this DLC? What's that about? That's like one of the big missing units, and that just would have made sense along the <laughs> Elspeth. I mean, maybe they're saving it for the Middenheim DLC, but like, why? I don't know. And, you know, <laughs> instead we get a, like, somewhat redundant steam tank fairy. It's like, oh, why wouldn't you? Yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, more, more mounts for engineers, though, I guess. Uh, so let's wrap up Elspeth. Uh, Elspeth von Draken, the Dark Lady of Nolan, is a respected advisor to the Elector Counts and instrumental at keeping the plagues of Nurgle at bay. As a magistrix of the Amethyst Order, the Graveyard Rose may be all that stands in the Maggot Lord's way. A uh, little rhyming there. As a powerful spellcaster, Elspeth von Draken soars across the skies on her Carmine Dragon. With the strong helping of a magical mastery under her belt. Elspeth von Draken is committed to protecting the Empire by any means necessary, and her alliance with Nolm has allowed her to help support the forces of the Empire in a unique way. Uh, so maybe she doesn't start in Nolm, and maybe she just, you know, or maybe she has a, a dual start, like, you know, she, you know, has Nolm under control, but she's, again, started by Pig Barter or something. Ooh, okay, so the the true potential of the Empire's gunpowder units can be unleashed with Nolan's Imperial Gunnery School, furthering the weaponry of the Empire. To do this, magic and black powder can no longer be separate entities, and instead must work together to ensure the forces of chaos are kept at bay. Elspeth's patronage will go a long way in helping to develop the next stage of technological advancement as she also offers her unique talents to combine her mastery of death magic into the munitions of the Imperial Gunnery School, creating a combined arms force of Amethyst units the foes of the Empire will regret crossing. So, right after I had re <laughs> recorded the Tamarkan part for this video, I realized that the blog for Tamarkan and all the Nurgle units and mechanics and reworks has come out and it looks fairly lengthy so I think I'm gonna make a separate video for that and not just be redundant and talk about Nurgle uh, here but I will have the Nurgle unit cards and all the ROR cards flash by on the screen again okay so that about covers it I think that's all my thoughts um, tell me your thoughts down below and oh I have a it might be coming out later today um, a bigger video on Joseph Bugman and a DLC for him after the Thrones of Decay. But just keep in mind when you watch it that uh, I made, I've been working on that video for like a month. Like it's a, one of my biggest videos ever. I'm very proud of it. And, but, <laughs> you know, like I have Doom Seekers in that video. You know, I was expecting that we'd have two Dwarf DLCs and then the Slayer units would be spread out between the two, but it seems like they're just going super Slayer heavy on this DLC, which, again, I already explained, I think makes sense if they are trying to <laughs> safeguard in case this is the last Dwarf DLC. Certainly hope not. We still need Joseph Bugman at the least. Um, and Crag the Grim, Grim Burlux, I digress. Uh, but anyways, that video might be coming out later today, so keep that in mind. Uh, thank you guys. Tell me your thoughts. Bye-bye.